Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed update on Hurricane Ernesto for Wednesday, August the 14th, 2024. So here's a look at the latest visible satellite imagery from tropicaltidbits.com, Dr. Levi Cowan's website. And as we could see here on the imagery, we could definitely get an idea that an inner core structure is still attempting to close off here on the imagery. If we look closely here, we have, again, a couple of areas of deep convection that are rotating around like a yin-yang fashion. So we got a deep area of thunderstorms to the east of the center. We have another one beginning to pop up across the northwestern and even western side. And then in the middle of that, you can see in the last few frames, we do have, while it's cloud-filled right now at the moment, it is starting to show a little bit of a dimple here on the imagery showing that eye-like fusion which indicates that Ernesto is still strengthening at a very modest rate, not rapidly in fashion, but we are seeing some intensification still taking place. Now, while Ernesto is moving away from Puerto Rico, it's moving in this general direction, there is still some really heavy rainfall and gusty winds still occurring over Puerto Rico and even portions of, say, eastern um, there of the Dominican Republic as we have a feeder band that is rotating all the way around and there is even some semblance of drier air. So whatever rain we do have here uh, will be short-lived because we do have some drier air in place. The only intensity estimates that we have today is one from the National Hurricane Center but also from an Air Force mission. Aircraft that flew through the system earlier today did show that the pressure starting off their mission was 993 and we're down in 991 millibars so in the last four passes here the pressure has only dropped about a couple of millibars which indicates that this system is not rapidly intensifying and only gradually so as it embarks to the northwest here at about 10 to 15 miles an hour but it is important to note there is very strong tropical storm and hurricane force winds occurring to the east of the center while the western side is barely seeing any tropical storm force winds so right now this is a very asymmetrical wind field both on satellite and also on this aircraft data likely due to some shear that we are going to show you here in a split second. So now when examining the upper level outflow pattern with Ernesto here, we can see on the water vapor imagery provided again by Tropical Tidbits, these darker colors up here to the northwest of the system usually indicate that there's a lot of drier air in the deep layers of the atmosphere, and the, this pocket of grayer colors indicates more moisture. So what we're seeing right here is if we look closely, we do, while we do have some outflow to the western side of the system, it is definitely being restricted, and most of the outflow is occurring to the north of the system and also to the east and to the southeastern sides of the system which indicates there is some notable westerly shear here in fact if we look at this see some of these cloud filaments over western Q or eastern cuba those are actually coming in out of the southwesterly direction and you can see even some filaments here not even moving at all and all you need is there's no wind here in the upper levels and you have su sufficiently strong wind um, at the surface coming in out of the southeast and this is a indication that there is again some northwesterly and westerly shear over this system which is plaguing this and this is why it is asymmetrical quite significantly with barely an inner core that is able to maintain itself on the western side so now here's a look at the 200 millibar upper level wind chart here from the h wharf model a hurricane specific trained model where we can see this in a much finer detail and this is for this afternoon and as we can see here this outflow that we talked about on satellite doing a pretty good job here at uh, illustrating this and then this is where we do have some of that westerly flow encroaching onto the system inducing a little bit of that restricted outflow on the southwestern and western sides of the system as we go over the next um say by tomorrow morning this outflow is going to continue to remain restricted Partly due to the fact that one, this trough, this smiley face trough coming in across uh, or off the eastern seaboard will be encroaching onto Ernesto's outflow. 
And secondly, there's another bit of a split tut cell over central Cuba here that is also going to superimpose this flow. So we don't have only westerly flow over this system or to the north of this system, but we have also westerly flow over the system from this trough. So the ending result here is that the system is not going to be in a very op uh, optimal environment that usually facilitates rapid explosive intensification, but more of a quick one instead. So there's a difference between quick and rapid. Quick as in like winds will probably increase about another 24 knots in about say 48 hours or so versus a more rapid one. So when we go forward here, we can see what is going to all happen here. In the next 48 hours, this trough is going to really be impinging. And look at this. This outflow is very much restricted. In fact, there's barely any outflow at all on this um, upper level chart where we have stronger barrel clinic isotropic flow in the upper levels from the southwesterly direction. Nice good jet streak here. This would uh, allow for some... Uh, quick intensification because of the uh, isotropic lift that is uh, being encroached or uh, being fanned out from the system, helping the system to exhaust all that heat out. And then once that trough leaves in, then the outflow, then the upper level environment might become marginally conducive this weekend. As it crosses over Bermuda, you can see how close this does get at 960 millibars, 970-ish. And then as it gets, uh, or basically in the next four and a half to five days, then um, it will merge up into another upper level trough that is to its west. And with this optimal setup, the system will actually do quite well despite of restricted outflow here because now we're going to begin extra tropical transition towards the end of the forecast. As you can see here with this very well defined outflow channel, that is going to be in place and this is a healthy optimal setup that will allow uh, Ernesto to at least maintain hurricane intensity very close to Nova Scotia as well as to Newfoundland and the Labrador. So now let's take a look at what the halves A is showing pretty similar with again that restricted outflow over the next 48 hours. And that still seems to be the thing here on the models which is the reason why there is not going to be a whole lot of explosive intensification here. I would say still under a major hurricane at this point. And then, of course, by the time we go into Saturday, this gets close to Bermuda, but not on top of Bermuda. We'll talk more about that at a closer zoomed in view, showing us that the environment here is still marginally conducive for at least some steady intensification. And then once this merges up with another trough, things could go a little bit more crazier with a larger wind field. So now the question is, how close will this get to um, to Bermuda? So Bermuda is right here on this particular plot. Purple indicates hurricane force winds. So if we back it out a few frames here, we can see by Friday night or Friday afternoon, here is Bermuda right here. We are going to initialize a live stream on this. There is, it's, this is still to be determined if we're going to be streaming all night on this. It just depends on how close this will get to Bermuda. If we get hurricane force winds just off the coast of Bermuda, we'll probably go live anyways. Versus if this is far enough to the west or to the east of Bermuda, we're probably not going to end up going live on this. So this is still to be determined here on the channel if I will go live or not on Friday night into Saturday since I'm open to streaming on Saturday. Now, by uh, Saturday morning, we can see hurricane force winds do encroach onto this system or uh, onto Bermuda. This is, again, August the 17th. And then the eye wall, the powerful eye wall moves over Bermuda. This would be a very serious situation, including catastrophic impacts, surge on enormous levels, perhaps uh, maybe as high as maybe 10 or so feet. We could be looking at uh, catastrophic flooding due to heavy rainfall and, of course, coastal flooding inundation, including the impacts of, of course, serious, serious hurricane force winds over this island. So if this comes to pass here on the H Wharf, this would be a, a very, very unfortunate situation on a life-threatening scale. 
And so this is going to be imp impacting Bermuda much of Saturday morning. And then that departs the area by Saturday afternoon into Sunday evening. Again, live streaming is to be determined here on the channel. And then once we go uh, out to day five, this could get close to Newfoundland and the Labrador of Canada as a very strong tropical storm with 70 to 75 mile an hour wind. Now, the reason why I say that this the live stream is to be determined here is because the half's A does keep this far enough away from Bermuda. Again, here's Bermuda here. Here is the hurricane, Hurricane Ernesto. Notice that all of the hurricane force winds, including even wind gusts, will miss Bermuda versus tropical storm force winds here in green do indicate that there will be tropical storm force winds over Bermuda regardless. Therefore, hurricane watches warnings, tropical storm watches or warnings will be needed for Bermuda within the next day or two as this could get awfully close to Bermuda. And again, how close does it get is to be determined. Looking at the latest spaghetti plot from uh, Tropical Tidbits, let's zoom in on this so you all can see. So we can see that there is a range of possible outcomes. It's hard to see where Bermuda is on this map, but I believe it's somewhere over here. And so there is again that difference on the spaghetti showing us, okay, this could miss Bermuda to the west, or this could still theoretically go east of Bermuda. And maybe the tropical storm force winds don't impact that island as much as say the fatter side if it were to pass to the west. So again, there is some uncertainty here to the forecast. There's some spread in the spaghetti plot, but there's also some spread and maybe significantly so on the intensity forecast on uh, Ernesto. Some of the models do want this to become a major hurricane versus most of the models do indicate this to become a category two. So for sure, we're at a hurricane right now and this will remain a hurricane probably for the next five or so days. But how strong does this get? Again, we're looking at a range of possible outcomes. So therefore, my intensity forecast is going to be quite generous here, indicating a peak intensity of 110 miles an hour and then weakening gradually down to uh, a lower end category two with 100 mile an hour winds and then eventually down uh, to a category one hurricane in the next five days. Here is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center indicating that this could reach major hurricane intensity. I would not be surprised from or in the next NHC advisory that they do take this letter M away. I am not very confident that this is gonna become a major hurricane and will reach speeds up to about 105 to 110 miles an hour is the max intensity that I predict. But nevertheless, the official NHC does call this to become a major hurricane by Friday morning. And then as it gets very close to Bermuda as a strong category two hurricane with winds of 100 to 110 miles an hour, again, streaming to be determined, this would be for Saturday early morning for Bermuda. That would be overnight Saturday for me when I'm sleeping away Probably not going to do so because of the system, to, again, depending on how close it gets. And then remaining a hurricane all the way through Monday. But we'll see if extra tropical transition can occur a little sooner, perhaps even by Monday morning or Monday night up here in Newfoundland and the Labrador of Canada. But for right now, winds are at 75 miles an hour, moving to the northwest at 16 miles an hour. Here's a look at the chances of tropical storm force winds from the National Hurricane Center, indicating that there is definitely, uh, Bermuda is right over here somewhere. There is about a 90 to 100% chance of tropical storm force winds for Bermuda. And again, this would arrive as early as, again, by Friday night for tropical storm force winds before the hurricane force winds come on shore. And here's a 30 to 40% chance over Nova Scotia and Canada. So just keep that in mind that there is an outside possibility. And theoretically, there is even still a possibility here that, say, Cape Cod, as well as easternmost Maine, could still get tropical storm force winds. And again, that is just a very slim chance, but it is on here and it's worth talking about in this video. Now, before I do close out the video, let's review with what we talked about here Hurricane Ernesto, 75 to 80 mile an hour winds, 
Pressure's down to 987, 988 millibars, according to the National Hurricane Center. And again, this is still threatening um, portions of Puerto Rico. My hearts and thoughts are out for all of those that have been dealing with a lot of flooding, heavy rainfall, and strong winds. And Bermuda is next in line for serious impacts. Again, depending on how close this gets to Bermuda, will determine if I go live on this overnight or not, covering uh, the system in great detail. But that's going to do it. Share, like, and subscribe. And also hit the bell notification icon to stay up to date here on the YouTube channel as I do my best at keeping you all updated on Hurricane Ernesto as it gets closer and closer to Bermuda. But anyways, I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another detailed update on Hurricane Ernesto.